All right. Uh, well, let's talk about the. T I'll get the team on screen first. We'll talk about the team here. Uh, Titus is pretty obvious. <laughs> uh, he's the holder of the chain, and uh, that's not the only thing he does. Uh, I have his OSB, but I'd rather use his BSB2 than his OSB, so what Titus has equipped is his chain and his BSB2. Um, and he got a, a little blast from the past in his first ability slot with Power Chain. Uh, what I've decided to do in this fight is... Uh, because Phoenix heals itself on the second turn for 50,000 health, uh, for, for 50,000 cure, uh, what I do is I hold basically all DPS until that point, and uh, the advantage of Power Chain is it does generate a little bit of Soul Break points and allows me to instantly cast the chain as soon as damage becomes viable. Um, I could also immediately chain to start the fight, and... Uh, I think, I, I, I'm positive I can do over 50,000 damage in a single turn, so it, though the boss would heal, it, it would still be, I, I would still have a net gain, um, but I like this way better because it gives more soul break points onto, to Titus. And it, uh, another good thing about it, I'm gonna go into this when the turn order comes up, but what happens is by power chaining on first turn and then chaining on the second turn. Uh, that allows me to take two actions on Yuffie and Bart's, which is very important. Because as in most fights, you use your soul break on the fourth turn if you don't get any, any assistance. And uh, Titus's chain comes with a quick cast two on it. This is... I'm glad we did this before the Belize fight, because the Belize fight is a lot more complicated version of this. This is just uh, manipulating turns to get your quick casts on the correct turns. So what's going to happen is Yuffie is going to act for soul break points, act for soul break points. Bart's is going to act twice for soul break points. Then they're going to get quick cast two from Titus. So their third action will be quick casted, and then their, their soul break on fourth turn will be quick cast. And that's, that's the important part. Um, you want the quick cast to be on the turns where they're going to take the longest casting. Um, so that's what Power Chain allows me to do, is delay the chain just enough. And you're, you're going to see it is literally just enough. Uh, so that they can take their two actions before they get quick cast. Alright, um, so that's Titus. Oh, he I don't have a, a water weapon for Titus, I only have two. Which is a fist weapon, Riku's USB one and uh, Titus's uh, OSB. I elected to put the the OSB on Bart's instead of Titus um, because Titus can use or would rather use thrown weapons because he's using sapphire bullets, which gets a very large multiplier increase when you're using a ranged weapon. Um, so. That was, that was my choice. It's de definitely much better to, to put that on Titus than to take the water weapon off Mars. Um, and Yuffie's the only fist weapon user on the team, other than Onion Knight, who's not attacking. Uh, so she gets the fist weapon. Uh, anything else? No. Uh, next up is Yuffie. Um, I've been told that it was it was bold for me to use Yuffie here, and I, I, don't, uh, I don't agree. I think she's amazing in this fight regardless of the fact that this boss does a lot of physical attacks or not physical attacks but attacks that remove physical blank because if you look at the AI table and I'm gonna go and get that for you right now hopefully I can get it in a hurry I should have had it prepared but the AI table is deceptive, and I think this is something I haven't really mentioned before in any other preview, in any other commentary. Here it is. Um, when you look at these AIs, you tend to look at them as a whole, and you look, oh my goodness, this boss does two times 
gravity attacks, which remove physical blanks. So every time the, the boss uses one of those attacks, oh, there goes all your physical blanks, along with other attacks that also remove physical blank. And you're like, well, physical blank must be useless in this fight. But it's important to note that if you're doing, if, if you are doing enough damage, which Yuffie does a ton of damage just by herself, not not including the fact that she's on the, you know, the same team with Titus and Bartz who are going to do a ton themselves. You're going to have a quick fight. You're going to advance through the phases quickly. So you're not going to see the entirety of this AI table. You're going to see a lot of the first few actions of each phase. And if you look in the second and third phases, uh, second phase, turn one, magical attack. Turn two, magical attack. Uh, and third phase, turn one, magical attack. Turn two, magical attack. These are plenty of time for Yuffie, and especially if you have Yuffie's LMR, to stack up blink stacks and go to town with the, the ninja ability. Um, you just need to pay attention and use them when you can. And uh, there's also times where Yuffie has some good soul breaks, uh, just plain soul breaks, and she doesn't need to rely on her uh, on ninja abilities. So another thing you can do is just sometimes not physical blink at all and take the hits uh, so she gets soul break points instead and use those soul breaks. Her BSB2 is really potent. It's, a, it's an instant cast in peril. So it does a ton of damage and increases the damage of you know two of the best water damage dealers in the game. So there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Um, so there's multiple ways to run this ninja in this fight. And, and extremely effectively. It, I would much rather use her to um, to add to a chain and deal a ton of damage than, say, uh, an Entruster and go, you know, put all those uh, Soul Break points onto Titus to use his BSB. I love Titus BSB2 spam, uh, alternating between BSB2 and Sapphire Blitz, but it worked better back when we only had Sapphire Shot. Now that we have Sapphire Blitz, uh, Titus just works well using that ability, because that ability is disgusting. Uh, it has a, over a 5.0 multiplier when uh, you're using a ranged weapon, which he is. Um, and it just does a ton of damage, he has a chance to dual cast it, especially if you have his, um, his USB-1. He just, he goes nuts with it. Uh, so I'd much rather leave the dedicated Entruster at home and use three DPS to take advantage of that chain. Um, next up, we have Aiko, and there's nothing real special about Aiko other than the fact that she's just an awesome healer. Uh, she's the only trance user in the fight, and I do use the trance to, uh, to keep her alive at one point, keep the entire battle going. Um, and I feel like that's... That's something that I always have to do now, is that whenever I have trance characters on a team, I want to make sure that I'm utilizing the trance to increase my, my healing output. Not just the trance mode itself, but the trance proc that brings her from you know below 20% health to, to full. And you'll see that in the fight. Uh, you see that she does have Lionheart on, uh, and that's because this boss is, is crazy with multiple attacks. I already talked about the double gravity attacks. Each of those hits, when it does a, a double gravity attack, generates soul break points. So that's 100 soul break points generated on somebody um, for getting hit twice. And, and Aiko generates 150. So uh, she definitely generates a ton of soul break points with that. And it, it was necessary anyway because uh, using uh, Onion Knight's USB is obviously necessary and... Uh, Speeding up the entire party is a very nice thing with uh, with Titus, and the fact that this this fight just spams soul break points at you uh, allows Lionheart to produce quite a bit for Aiko. So, and she keeps the the, the party alive um, a lot and often. And she not only needs Lionheart, but she also gets help from uh, from Onion Knight. This is a very, very, very healing-intensive fight. Um, 
and without Aiko in her last stand, and without her turn being up every time that it procs, um, this fight would be rough with just Aiko. Um, I would want somebody else, someone who never allows us to get close to dying, because Phoenix does sap the party, and the last stand isn't that effective if you're not using uh, your Medica instantly upon last stand procking. Uh, and sometimes that's not even enough. I, I should have saved a video of uh, some of the times where I instantly USB after last stand procs, and everyone dies anyway because sap ticks. Uh, sap has a very fast tick rate, unlike poison. Um, okay, so that's Aiko and Bart's. <laughs> you see, Bart's has a, a real blaster in the past, even more so than Power Chain as a life siphon equipped, and that's because of the first turn of the fight, and that's it. Um, I know that I'm not going to deal more than 50,000 damage by design on the first turn of the fight, so there's no reason for me to use anything else other than life siphon to generate 150 soul break points um, to the 135 that the spell blade generates. So that's what life siphon's for. Um, and then from that point on in the fight, it is pure Spellblade and uh, and Soul Breaks. And uh, again, because this boss spams so many Soul Break points at you, you get hit so many times, um, he, uh, or Bart's, without any Entrust help at all, can support both his USB and an element, an element BSB. And I use both of them here. Uh, Onion Knight is a pure Entruster. He's got all the defensive gear on. I, at one point, used Chain Waterja instead of Wrath. Uh, Chain Waterja generates 135 soul break points to Wrath's 180. But with Yuffie on the team, who, uh, with her USB 2, uh, and just plain old ninja abilities, ramps the chain up so quickly, and the chain is only a 100% chain. Uh, only a 100% chain. Um, it just... It became unnecessary. I would much rather the extra soul break points generated by Wrath because, a a frankly, Aiko needs everything she can get to keep the party alive in this, this damage-intensive fight. Um, and that's all Onion Knight does. He does not uh, recast his USB. There's th That is way too many soul break points. I can't spare 500. That... We'll, we'll always need to go to Echo instead. Um, so that's the five characters, and uh, Magicide team is typical of me. I don't. It depends on what other people use, but my typical uh, Magicide team is uh, one Empower Magicite, one Dampen Magicite, two F Rays, and uh, a Wild Card slot where I just throw in, you know, whatever. Whatever, whatever I got sitting around that'll benefit the team. And in this case, it's just a 99 Octo Mammoth. It's a, just a naked Octo Mammoth. Uh, hold on one second. I need to, when I do the... The team comp picture on the right side, I need to... Add in magicites because I guess you know the passives that they have uh, in the the level of the magicites is actually pretty important knowledge. So uh, Geo has it's just a 99 Geo with a Kraken inherited into it, uh, and I took the Empower uh, Water 15 and the Blade Ward 5 from Kraken. The Blade Wards don't do a whole lot in this fight. Um, it's re he, Geo's really just here for the entry and uh, the Empower Waters. And for everybody else, uh, Fanfrit is pretty typical. Um, I'm basically going to do this for every single element, which is... Uh, they start with their two basics, which is Dampen uh, and uh, Fanfrit has Spell Ward. And then I took the four-star Dampen Magicite from... The previous fire, and I inherited into Fanfrit. These are the two passives from Gizmaluk. Uh, a Dampen 10 and a Resistance Boon 15, uh, which is useful in this fight. Uh, 
There's a lot of magic damage and tons of it in this fight. Um, the F-Rays are pretty typical for a physical team. Well, for me. My, my typical F-Rays, which is uh, Precise Strikes and, and Health Boon. And it, you see, it's not even an inherited uh, Octomanith. It really is just a naked Octomanith. I would have... If I couldn't sub-30 with this team, I would have improved, sought to improve this slot, but I didn't need to, so I just used that Octomammoth. So I got three Empower 15s, if you count the Geo and the Octomammoth, um, two level five Health Boons, Spell Ward, Resistance Boon. It's actually a really good deck for the fight. Uh, because of all the, the health-based damage and the magic damage and Double dampen. Ah, it's really just a good deck. Um, okay. Uh, any questions before I get started about uh, the team comp or the deck? Some stuff that I didn't mention. Um, it goes just using USB. Yuffie's using USB 2 and... I don't know, some runs I use her BSB2 on the last action of the fight, but it's, uh, I, I can usually run this fight with just UV, uh, USB2, that's it. <laughs> cat's, uh, the cat's name is Skillet. And she's using my bookcase as a pillow. Blitz balls do count as ranged, yes. I wish I had one of the water blitz balls in the game. It would turn Titus into even more of a beast than he already is. Alright, so. On we go. You see the first turn of the fight is just going to be pretty subdued. We generate physical blink with Yuffie, we life siphon, we shelga, and power chain. Look at that mad damage. Now, this is the important, the, the first important turn. Uh, you're going to see the, the the cast speed manipulation of Titus's chain and the two DPS. I'll get this off screen first. Okay, you saw me use uh, Yuffie's second ability instead of her first. Uh, you saw me use the, the washing machine, let's call it that. Um, because on the next turn, all of her physical blink stacks are going to be removed, so there's no point in me generating on this turn when I could actually get a 5 hit off instead. And that's kind of what I was talking about and how you need to just pay attention. Uh, look at the AI list and know what, what attacks are coming so you know what ability to use on Yuffie. And on this turn, it's always the washing machine. You see, I've used both Yuffie's action and Bart's action before the chain goes off. So they they get their soul break points and now they'll be able to quick cast their, uh, their soul breaks on fourth turn. See, I target that Kirada because the next attack is a gravity attack. Which means the uh, Echo's Kirada, if I didn't target it, would target a random one of those four people that just took the damage. Uh, Yuffie did not take the, the first attack, so she obviously won't get targeted by the Kirada. And what would kill the run at this point is if the Kirada hit Echo instead of somebody else. 
I targeted Bart's because I run two Everays, and um, the more health you have, the more damage you do when you've got Everays on your team. So um, if I have a have a choice on who to target, I'll usually go for the highest damage dealer. In this case, is Bart's. Just to make sure that that heal does not hit Aiko, because I want her trance to hit. And you see I used the washing machine again there on uh, Yuffie, even though she has no physical blink stacks at the moment. Uh, and I talked about that briefly in the team comm, is because I want her to take hits. Uh, I want the next action to hit Yuffie so she generates enough soul break points to use your USB on turn four. You'll see it's, it's very close. Uh, the count for me is... Uh, Yuffie can generate a maximum of two physical blinks over these first few turns, and in which case she will have enough um, she will have enough soul break points to, to use her USB. Uh, and because we generated one physical blink stack on first turn, I didn't I don't want to take the risk that she'll generate two physical blink stacks by dual casting on this turn right here, giving her three, which would remove her from contention to, to cast her USB. So, I deal with a three-hit washing machine. It breaks my heart to see her double cast that, but it's necessary because the soul break is more important. You see, that was the turn that we set up with the heal on Bart, so we uh, can trance Aiko, and now we apply Last Stand. This is the most this is what I do a lot, is I try to get the party as hurt as I possibly can uh, before, you know, capitalizing on the soul break points that Lionheart generated. Now we're already entrusting to Aiko. Uh, you saw on Titus's turn there that I had a Soul Break ready to go, and in most of my runs, uh, I thought it was a good idea to immediately use that. I mean, look how early on in the chain we are. Uh, by using that and then instantly casting out a, a, um, a Sapphire Blitz on or Sapphire Bullets on the next turn, um, he's going to have enough Soul Break points to cast his chain when it comes to that. But Sapphire Bullets is so strong that I'm actually okay with delaying this um, and just using Sapphire Bullets. And when it comes time to recast Chain, what I'll do instead is use his BSB2 and then follow it up with an instant Chain so it saves them that 2.5 second cast time. Now. I utilize those quick cast charges on Bart's and Yuffie. It's more useful on Yuffie because Bart's has Thunder God mode, but I mean the the concept stays the same. And they both quick cast out their soul breaks. That, this turn is also, well, a, a, everything in a Magicite fight is pretty much by design. Uh, that one last stand procking means that I could free cast a Curata the last turn. That's going to hit Titus, and that means I have four last stands on the people that are low, which gives Aiko enough time to cast her USB next turn with the Soul Break points she just got from Onion Knight. This would be a different battle if that last stand didn't proc. Or if more than one person's last stand proc. Still saving those soul break points on, on Titus. This uh, chain lasts for 15 seconds. 
So I and I know that this fight is going to go up to you know the 27 to 29 second mark. So I want to recast that chain at about 14.5 to 15 seconds. And once we get back to it. You see the boss is at about 80% health. I know I've because of my previous attempts that I've triggered a phase change. Remember what I talked about with uh, Phoenix's AI table is that the first two actions that Phoenix makes is um, are magical uh, in, in the phase and that's why I used Yuffie's washing machine instead of the blink generator. Uh, she generates a bl uh, one charge of blink when she uses her USB and that's what I'm using the washing machine with right now. That's a lot of damage. For Chase, add on to that. There is no reason why Yuffie can't be a high damage member of this team, even though physical blinks are so frowned upon. Hearts at 14.7 seconds has naturally generated enough soul break points to use uh, to use two soul breaks without any interest. That's how many soul break points this uh, this boss generates because of all of its just massive area of effect spam. Now we use the BSB2, so we get an Instacast charge next turn, and that'll be the chain. Sometimes the run ends here, because <laughs> everyone's sapped, and those last stands have been popped, and if, if, uh, if sap actually ticks, then everyone did. Everybody does. No, Yuffie is just awful damage in this fight. Just terrible. <laughs> that was about 130,000 damage. At quick cast speed. Natural quick cast speed. Now everybody gets quick cast again because of the recast of the chain. Fight it, the quick cast two chains are all very good even though they're generation one. And this is uh, something I didn't really talk about, is the boss can't attack you in between your action and a chase. So if you just use her physical blink ability, her uh, her USB 2 chase is, is de dependent on her physical blinks. So if you even just use it once, she gets the, the second tier chase on her USB 2. Well, what if she dual casts the physical blink ability? Well you still get a high damage turn when she's just generating physical points. What is this, USB number 4 on Echo? We're only 19 seconds into the fight. Lots of damage in this fight. It's the reason why uh, Kamara USB strats are so powerful, because the boss just kills itself. in a hurry. You you can coin, but um, something I've realized over, I don't know, doing these five-star Magicites and actually doing difficult fights with chains, I, don't, I didn't actually have a lot of this stuff available for four-star, but now that I've seen it in action, I'm okay at killing a chain early 
As long as that means that I can capitalize on uh, a hot, the, starting a, a, a chain earlier allows me to utilize a chain later in the fight as well. So while I may be losing damage now, I'm gaining damage later uh, by casting the chain at that point. So yeah, it, it kind of goes against like instinct, like, oh my god, I want to keep the chain as high as I can so everyone's doing all of this damage. But it, it ends up equaling out or even being better to recast the chain early. And I'm actually going to like go into that when it comes to the Final Fantasy VII Torment because it, it happens there as well. Because people, uh, because of ramp up, your team gets stronger as the fight goes on. So you, you're, you're usually better in a better position to take advantage of the later chain than you are the earlier chain. Uh, I don't think that's really the case here. The, this team has a really fast ramp up. But um, but anyway, that's that's what I've noticed. That recasting chain early, as long as you can make sure that you can take advantage of it later on in the fight, is perfectly fine. That was the ideal time to cast the chain, in my opinion. To recast the chain. Because look, we're, we're at 21 seconds and it's already at 71%. It's not like I actually lost anything. We're going to have 10 more here from Bart. This is why I took Chain Water Joe off of all onion. Just totally unnecessary. Yeah, that's a that's a good point Colin brings up. Um, knowing that you can keep the chain active for for more damage at that current time, or recast and then have more damage at the end of the fight, is a useful tool. Because sometimes you need that damage in the mid part of the fight. So you don't want to recast chain because you do need to push a phase. There's a lot of stuff that happens in these five star magic sites that is just dangerous to leave a boss too long in a phase. Like Belias. I if you look at that link that I posted in uh in Belias's second phase from 80% to 41%, turn five, it berserks slots one and five. You do not want to see turn five against Belias because that can ruin a team because it's hard to include a, a status blink on a team like that. So if you need to leave the chain active to get past that, it's totally worth it, yes. I've lost count how many times it goes to USB in this way. And it's not done. And that was almost complete capping damage on Titus, even though he doesn't have a water weapon. Because of the way, because of Sap and Last Stand here, Aiko is really, really on a strict time schedule. Her USB needs to be up every time everyone dies, immediately. So she can get people up, you know, away from 1%, otherwise it's happening. Magic pixels. Luckily, we have plenty of time to end this fight. And everyone's at full health. <laughs> Troll cure.
Luckily, we had plenty of time. And luckily, Sap didn't tick. I played the end of that fight pretty messy. Oh, did I never double cast? Um... I'm not sure what else I have to say. I, I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. Is there any questions that anyone had? I believe I could. Uh, some of my previous attempts before I started using um, Eiko was uh, doing a Mass and Trust strat to Aphmau with her USB, which heals for less. Um, and has a, a wasted haste component where with Realms USB, uh, she gets the Stone Skin, which is obviously really useful in this fight because you need all the protection you can get. And it, it's a it's a WHT-based heal, where Aphmau's is NAT, which means because it's a WHT, she gets benefits from the WHT healing in 4-star and 5-star dives. Um, the Aphmau comp actually looked like it was going somewhere. Like, it, it could have worked if she healed for more. I really believe that if I uh, had Realms USB, that I could have a, a different sort of fight here that would also be a sub-30. It would just be based on uh, instant casting with Realm rather than... Um, rather than living on the edge with Last Stand and Sap. Like, I hate this run. Um... I was able to take a video of one of the better ones, but sometimes it just doesn't work out uh, because of when you push the phase, sometimes kind of makes things a little weird and sap will tick before you, you recast your last stand. And it's like, okay, well, there's, you know, 10 minutes of my time gone. Um, it's a really tough farm. I wish I, uh, I wish I could do, I wish I could play a healing comp rather than a last stand comp. With Realm's USB or Alara's USB, I think would be much preferred. Uh, wondering why Octomammoth? Because he's what I got. That, uh, because of the way I set up my Magisite, I basically build four, four Magisite teams. Which is Empower. That's uh, Geos Gyno, Dampen, Fanfrit, and two Evrays. I build teams around those four. And then I have an empty slot to throw whatever. And, you know, I can buff it up or use whatever I want there. I had an Octomammoth close to level 99. So what I did was I spent a couple Arcana, made it 99, threw it in that slot, and it worked. If... I needed to, if this team wasn't sub-30, I would have either used something else or or inherited to it, increase its inheritance level, and stuff like that. There were avenues to improvement in this team, I just didn't need to use them. That's all. Octomamba is not ideal for this guy. Just what I had. Uh, a third in power 15 is still 4% increased water damage. That's... That's nice. It's also a level 5 health boom. It's also nice. Any more questions? Uh, you're... Uh, Titus and OK LMR. OK LMR is pretty damn useful. I'll definitely... I will admit that. Um, but Titus is... Less so. You saw how much damage he was doing at the end of the fight. 
and uh, he loses his M water because I don't have any sources of M water for Titus. He loses that at 25% or 25 seconds. He still does a, a pretty hefty amount of damage even when his M water is gone because the chain count is so high. So if you have ways to make up that damage elsewhere, like, I don't know, Yuffie, Yuffie's bursts. I could use Yuffie's bursts as her second soul break instead of her USB 2. Um, arcanes on anybody. I can you get a water chain on the cheap? Can't. <laughs> Is Riku's uh, or was Riku's chain on the the chain banner in fourth anniversary? Maybe maybe that could be the place. Well, Riku's chain is on the the Final Fantasy X event that's coming up uh, in a couple weeks. That is not a bad banner, though. As usual, I advise caution against spending 50 mithril on non-awakening banners. <laughs> I say that as my next draw target is a 50 mithril banner without a, an awakening on it. But that's more like a uh, let's wait and see because I really like that banner and I want to I want to see what actually ends up on it. I might be less interested in in that banner because I've sub 30 the Final Fantasy 7 torment. Even though <laughs> seeing what I did in the Final Fantasy VII Torment makes me want Cloud's Arcane all the more. Knowing that I could do over a million damage with it. Astragos is nice too. I think Rico and Strago are both really good chain holders. <laughs> 